Joining me now is Dr. Isaac Bogotch. He's a member of Ontario's COVID-19 Vaccine Distribution Task Force. Uh, Dr. Bogotch, good morning. Uh, good to see you on this Thursday. Great. This is something that I asked you about, I think, a week ago, whether you could mix vaccines. What do you make of the UK now starting this trial? How does this work? So a couple of things. First of all, as of today, you cannot mix vaccines and no one should be doing this. What's happening is they're studying this to see if it's possible and if it's safe and if it provides a more robust immune response in the future. It's an excellent question to ask. It can provide very meaningful answers, especially with uh, boosting an immune response and ensuring we have a more robust immune response. Also looking at uh, delaying intervals between vaccines. Like This will answer some very important questions, but it's best to guide policy with hard data, and this trial will get the hard data. So as of today, I know we always have to timestamp conversations, but as of today, no, people shouldn't be getting two different vaccine brands, but maybe we will in the future based on the results of this trial. Okay, so what would make it possible, the fact that they're both these mRNA-type vaccines? Well, the AstraZeneca is, is uh, one type of vaccine, and then the Pfizer is an mRNA vaccine. So they take slightly different approaches to, to accomplishing the same goal. But at the end of the day, I think the, the key metrics are, are you going to be able to provide the same degree or even perhaps better protection against getting COVID-19? And that also means getting the infection, or if you're unlucky enough to get the infection after vaccination, mitigating the severity of infection as well. And can you alter the dosing intervals between the two shots? Uh, and, and again, these are very important questions as we roll vaccines out globally and as we expect supply chain issues and, and issues with access to vaccines. I mean, it might provide uh, healthcare providers across the world with a, a greater number of options to vaccinate a larger proportion of the population. First, it was Pfizer. Now it's Moderna. Another um, disappointing headline about the delivery of vaccines. What does this mean for our rollout overall? It just slows line. everything down. Yeah. yeah, just slows it all down. It slows it all down. It's unfortunate. Uh, it's, it's obviously, uh, you know, a, a, a significant hurdle at this point in time. Again, if we take them at their word, if we get the vaccines that we're supposed to get by, uh, uh, by March, we'll be okay. It doesn't mean that this is good. Of course, this isn't good. This prevents the expansion of programs. This makes pro it harder for programs to give everyone their second dose. It, it, it does put up a lot of roadblocks. But truly, if this is truly a short-term issue and things ramp up in March as they're expected to do, we'll be okay in the medium to long term. Okay. Dr. Bogoch, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again soon.